Hey everyone, I'm Charlene Habermeyer of Good Parenting Brighter Children, and this is Tidbits of Wisdom for Parents. Today we're going to talk about art again, and let me give you a little background um, on myself. Um, I actually, my undergraduate degree is in art with an emphasis in interior design. I actually worked in interior design in Utah, Chicago, and Los Angeles. But um, I was no Joanna Gaines, and I didn't keep with it, and I was really interested in education, so I went back and got my master's in education. So, But I love art. I'm a huge advocate of art, all the arts, of art and music and literature and all the rest of it, as I'm sure uh, I've demonstrated over these many, many videos that I have done. But I'm going to tell you how important it is because, you know, they've done all the studies on music, and yes, music just fires up the brain like nothing else. But actually drawing, painting, sculpting, or anything that has to do with the arts is a close, runs a close second. It was so important to me. Um, I got all my kids. They all took art lessons along with music lessons. And hopefully if you have opportunities in your neighborhood and in your community, by all means expose your children to art lessons. I'm going to tell you two different things about art, two different methods of art that you may want to look into in the books that you can look into them with. But one of them is called Cardboard Creations by my friend Barbara Rucci. This is amazing. Now she has a background similar to mine. She majored in art and then she wrote this book and it's all about how to introduce and get your kids involved with some fascinating and fun and interesting ways of expressing themselves through art. The wonderful thing that I like about her is that she uses recycled materials. She uses cardboard from cardboard boxes. Now think about all those cardboard boxes from Amazon. Go around your neighborhood, ask everybody who gets anything from Amazon, those people who have Amazon Prime, they're ordering from Amazon every other day. Gather up all of those boxes. You can collapse them and you can keep them in an area of your garage or your house so that you can use them for different art projects. Another thing is she uses all and she gathers in all different types of recyclable material. The next time there's something that you buy that comes in a package and you take everything out of the package, don't throw away that package. That could be very valuable. There could be something in there that could be recyclable and used as art. And so like even like a toilet paper roll or a paper towel roll, those are all recyclable. So get a big bucket or a bin or something and just throw in all your recyclable things. In terms of creating with uh, cardboard boxes, think about when you were young and when your children were young or when your children are young right now. So you spend all this time trying to find the per perfect birthday gift or the perfect Christmas gift or whatever gift it is. And what does the child go for? They go for what was packaged. They go for that cardboard box. So much so that when our kids were growing up that we used to get these big, huge um, appliance boxes and we would set them up in a room of the house and the kids would play with those for hours on end. So let me share with you some of the things that she suggests. I love this very first one. This is a, a box city and you take different shapes and sizes of boxes and you stack them on each other and then you paint them and you can put in the windows and everything. This would be an excellent one to help your kids to learn teamwork skills. Now you can work together as a family or you can invite some kids from the neighborhood over and they can create this wonderful box city just out of all these different sizes and shapes of cardboard boxes. Another example is, <clears throat> now how many of you, I'm sure every parent out there has had the fun experience of getting a paper bag from the grocery store and creating a mask. So what you do is you get the paper bag, you put it on your child, you, uh, you indicate where the, their eyes are, their nose, their mouth, you cut those areas out. Then you give them all different types of different things, so the recyclable things, and you can go to Michael's and pick out glitter and pom-poms and all different types of paper things and they can decorate these masks to their heart's content. These are always fun. And if you're a grandparent and you're wondering what to do when your grandkids come over to visit, do an art project. And these cardboard creations, this would be a fabulous place to start. I know I've talked a lot about doing things in the kitchen and baking and cooking. That's a great thing to do as well, but these things are equally fun. 
Now this one is mini watercolor quilts. And so what she's done is you give each child um, either squares or oblongs, rectangles of little white sheets of paper, and then they watercolor on them. <clears throat> In, and they do like a dozen or more of them. And then you take a flat piece of cardboard and they use either washi tape or colored tape and they tape them on in any configuration they want. And you explain to them that, and you can show them pictures of a quilt, that when, you're, when you make a quilt, it has all different patterns that go into making that quilt. When I saw this, it reminded me of the quilters of uh, G's Bend Alabama. That's in southern Alabama. I read about them years ago. These are African-American women who for over a hundred years have quilted. Now because of their poverty conditions, they throughout the years they, they use every single scrap of material that they come in contact with. Many years ago when potatoes used to come in bags, the burlap bags, they would even wash those burlap bags. They would cut them into squares and they would use them as part of their quilts. Their whole idea of making these quilts was for warmth, for their children, for themselves, to keep their kids warm during the winter months. Now, what happened is, is they didn't have the fancy books and magazines and everything to create these quilts. They just used their own imagination, their own creativity to create these quilts using all of these recyclable pieces of fabric. Well, about 10, 15 years ago, um, there was a man from New York. He was going through G's Bend, Alabama, and he saw all of these quilts. They were on hanging on lines. They were hanging. Uh, they were draped over rocks, and it was pretty much their wash day. They were washing everything. But as he looked at these quilts, he just fell in love. He said, "These are pieces of art." So, long story short, these women are now famous. These quilts go for twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. Oprah Winfrey has been down there. She's interviewed them. So when I saw this in the book, these watercolor quilts, squares, of these children, the very first thing that came to my mind were these quilters of G's Bend in uh, Alabama. So this would be a fun thing to do as well. Now, one thing that we had in our house, we had what was called a bonus room. Part of it was carpeted, part of it was linoleum. As I look back on it, I wish I would have made the entire thing linoleum because then I wouldn't have worried so much about using paints and everything else all over the place. Another thing is, um, let me get to it. <clears throat> is that she made like this uh, bumpy collage wall. Now I love this because I love of all the different textures. So again, as I mentioned, when you are like even like those um, cardboard egg cartons or anything that comes in a carton, save those as recyclable materials. Then you can give them to your children. They can paint them to their heart's content. You can put a big piece of cardboard on the wall and then have them create however they want to put these up on the wall with glue. Now you can use a hot glue gun that would require uh, parental assistance, but that's not a big deal. Look what they're creating. As you can see over here, they have all different types of bumpy things so that they come to understand that all of these different sensory things go to create very imaginative pieces of art. The last one that I'm going to show you, and this is just made from toilet paper rolls and they created and made different sculptures. And you can see that they're extremely interesting. On other pages they show when some of the children wanted to actually paint them. The sky's the limit. This book, again, is Cardboard Creations and it's packed full of all different kinds of fun ideas that you can do with your children art-wise. Let me tell you about another program. It's called Monart and it was started by Mona Brooks. And my Two youngest children were actually involved in this. My two oldest children took regular art lessons, but the Mona Brook is an interesting uh, pr approach to art. And there's a book out called Drawing with Children. I don't have it because actually my son, one of my youngest son, his artwork was featured in it, so I gave him the book, so I don't have it to show you. Anyway, um, <clears throat> what she did is when the child came in, they got a piece of paper, an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, and on one side of it were all of these different shapes. Then there was a blank portion where they were supposed to copy the shape. They were supposed to look at the shape, then they were supposed to copy it. Then there was a guided drawing. The teacher came up and she showed them how they were taking all of these shapes and they were going to create them into a, a picture you know, a recognizable picture. Now, some people complain and says, well, you know, that, that really stifles creativity and blah, blah, blah. Well, I sat in on a number of these. It doesn't stifle creativity at all. In fact, it's a really interesting way of especially 
non-art type people or people who are not as uh, confident in their drawing abilities to be able to take those shapes and to create something really neat and interesting and beautiful. So what I was interested in doing is too with my two sons, um, my one son that was in it, he had all the learning disabilities and my other son did not and he was a very precise linear type child. So they would come home with the same lion or the same bird or the same whatever and they would look totally and completely different. I have to tell you that the one, my son with all the learning stuff, learning disabilities and issues, his drawings were off the charts creative. They were totally different from his brother who didn't have any learning disabilities and you know his life was in a very straight linear line so it's just another way another type of exposure of your children uh, being exposed to art and falling in love with the world of art again it's cardboard creations this is something that you can do in your own home you can also look up Moan Art and you can look in your community to see if there's any art classes that are offered that follow this type of um, um, approach to art but whatever it is get your kids involved with art and from there then you can take them to art museums as I mentioned before thank you for joining me and I'll see you tomorrow